I'm Bill Middleton. Uh, the three of us uh, are from the Maryland Association of Boards of Education, uh, who has been contracted to uh, conduct the search. Uh, that group is made up of all of the boards of education in the state of Maryland as an association. And what we're doing is a service provided by, by MABE to the local boards. Uh, it is a contract uh, with the local boards. Um, my background, uh, I'm a retired superintendent from uh, Wicomico County, Salisbury. Uh, been retired long enough to forget telephone numbers and so forth, but still remember where the central office is, even though they moved. Um, I've been doing this for since uh, about when I retired and have been involved in about 23, 24 searches in the state um, and a number of counties. Uh, first time we've been to Queen Anne's, but some we've done, done a couple times. Um, and uh, our, our job is to, to find a fit for your county at this time. And you'll see on this uh, PowerPoint sp uh, specifics. But uh, we make no decisions. We do consultation. We advise, we suggest. Uh, sometimes we cajole or try to, you know, but uh, the decisions are made by five people. And that's the Board of Education. Uh, any any pro process that we use, uh, we try to adjust to the county that we're working in. Uh, and at the end, some people are going to say, you know, when do I get to vote who I like for the superintendent? Quite frankly, <laughs> you don't. <laughs> uh, you get to advise and put in all kinds of input, especially at the end, which you'll learn about. But there are five votes, and that's it. Uh, uh, working with me, over at the table, um, Dr. Thelma Monk, and uh, she's rather shy. Um, she's retired from Montgomery County uh, as the uh, <coughs> Director of Human, Human Resources. Resources. Mm -hmm. uh, Thelma um, does our reference checks and our internet searches. And uh, her secondary job is to keep me out of trouble, okay? Uh, I will tell you that I've worked with a number of people and I've done a lot of <laughs> reference checks on my own and uh, I, I just let her do it because she's much better at it than I am. Uh, people will tell her things they don't even know they're telling her. <laughs> <laughs> Which is what <laughs> reference checks are all about. Uh, and also uh, Katie Blumsack. Uh, Katie is uh, Director of Board Development with MABE. Uh, as a, a staff member there and also works with the uh, team here. She handles community input. So this is her show today. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then at the end, uh, with the focus groups, what you'll learn about, basically that's hers also. Um, that's who we are. Uh, we're here to serve this county. Uh, with a process that we have used a number of times and we believe gets more people involved than any search process we know about. And that's, that's the key to get people involved and this is the first step. And I'm going to turn it over to Kitty and let her go through and then we'll have an open question and answer time. So my first question is, is there a way for us to turn off this? Yeah. Thank yes. you so much. The uh, middle switch. Thank you. Oh, much better. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being part of this whole process. As Bill said, we're pleased to be here, and I probably need to hold this closer because we're so much. <laughs> and what we're going to do are two things tonight. First thing we'll do is kind of review the process that we use in, in, in conducting a search. And then the second thing we will do is put you to work giving us information that we can share with the board. Make sense? So... Come on, you're supposed to work. This is on, that's on. When in doubt, go to the mouse, right? 
All right, let me stand. So we have two purposes, really, for the search. The first one, as Bill said, is to find the best leader for this school system at this point in time, someone to take you from where you are now to the next level. And then the second piece of that, which is equally important to us, and that is planning, conducting a search that's fair, that's equitable, that's thoughtful, and that's responsive. And so those are the two guiding principles for us as we go through the search process. I'm going to be tethered to this, I can tell. So what are the steps involved? There's planning, there's advertising, there's interviewing, and then there's selecting. So in this first part, the planning part, what we're doing is we're identifying the criteria. We're identifying the characteristics. And then you notice that last one. It says gathering public input at key points during the search. And there are two key times when we do that. This is the first, the first piece of that. And I will tell you that the board hasn't started doing anything, and they won't start the search until we've gathered the information from tonight. So they're really waiting on feedback that, that they get from you before they do anything. At the end of the search, we also do a one day for each candidate, each of the finalists in the county. And that's that second time that we'll want to have people involved in that process. So it's kind of at the beginning and almost at the end of the process. And then once we've done that, we establish a timeline with the board. And as we establish that timeline, I'll give you, a, I've got a calendar in here that kind of shows what the timeline generally looks like. And then we will, based on what we hear from you tonight, what the board tells us is we'll develop characteristics, we'll develop criteria. What kind of superintendent are you looking for? Then we'll advertise. We'll create a brochure, advertise, and we'll do that advertising, advertising <coughs> nationally as well as locally. So it will go out in the normal stream of things. And then I'm part of a superintendent searchers network for the National School Boards Association. So this job posting gets shared with people from the rest of the country. And as we know, in this day and age, anybody who's interested in looking for a job who knows there's a job open, what do they do? They click websites. And yours, your website will be one that's clicked as will ours. So those are the two places that we'll see. And then we start the screening. So once we get the candidates, we start a screening process. And in that process, what we're looking for are how well do, do people match the characteristics? How well do they match the criteria? Um, and then what we do is we give all of those applications to the board. Board gets to see everything. And that's unlike a lot of the national firms, because a lot of these national firms literally will say, here are the top 10. We say, look at all of them, because they can, the board can may see something in someone who may not have met what we thought were the characteristics that they say we want to talk to, we want to interview them. And so the board will then determine what they want to do. We will conduct a first group of reference checks, and those are references that people give us. And what do first round reference people say about the candidates? What do they say? What? That they're probably good people. Best person in the world for the job. Couldn't find anyone more qualified. You're lucky if you can get them. Uh, but we don't stop there. And when Bill talked about what he and Thelma do, it's much more intense. So after we do that first round of reference checks, the one question that they always ask is, can you give me the name of some other people who might know this person? Um, and when we get into it even more deeply, as people move on through the process, the next question they ask of those second tier is, can you give me the names of any people? who might know this person. And then can you give me the names of anyone? Uh, so we're really pretty thorough. Of course we do what you all will do when you find out who the finalists are. We immediately go to the internet. Uh, the board will identify the top six to eight candidates for this first interview. And they will conduct a structured interview. So that means that every candidate gets asked the same questions. conduct the interview, and then we get into the more extensive ones, which have the second and third round. And when we get close to the finals, we start talking to union presidents, we talk to uh, board members, we talk to anybody we can possibly, anyone who will answer the phone, uh, we, we kind of talk to them. Um, and, and what we want to know is, how suitable is this person? Is there anything we need to know? Is there anything that might not bring uh, a lot of pride to the school system? The board then selects from that group of six to eight, and they narrow it down. And they can narrow it down to six if they've started with eight. They can narrow it down to four, five. It's up to the board because it's kind of, you know, who looks good in that one. And then we do a second round of interviews. And this one is a combination of things. Come on in. And so this combination really is part of a formal presentation as well as an unstructured conversation with the candidate. So that's two, that's two rounds of interviews that they've gone through. 
Once that's happened, then they identify the finalists. And as we said, we usually like to have three finalists. At that point, we arrange for each of the candidates to spend an entire day in the school system. And it is a long day. They start at 8 in the morning and they finish about 8 at night, which we think is about what a superintendent's <coughs> day would look like anyway. So no surprise there. We want them to meet with staff, with parents, with community members, with business leaders. We invite the elected officials in for kind of a coffee and conversation. And it's a full, full day for that board member, uh, for the candidate. And then they meet with the board for dinner after that. And then we share the feedback that we've gotten from each of these focus groups. Once that's all happened, I want to share the, super, people always ask, what are the criteria for superintendent? What, are, what does the superintendent need to have? So, first of all, they need to meet the requirements in the state for certification in early childhood, elementary, or secondary ed. So that's first. They must have a master's degree. You know, it says master's, so it doesn't say doctorate. And that may be one of the, one of the criteria that the board, or you may suggest, well, let's up that to a PhD. Or you may want to say PhD preferred. So that's one of those places where there's some leeway. And then they have to have three years successful teaching and two years administrative experience at pre-K 12. And then, but wait, there's more. They have to have, in addition to that master's, another 24 credits in de developing and articulating a shared vision, organizational management, positive school culture, ethics, leadership, and collaboration with diverse stakeholders. So it's pretty comprehensive. Now, if it used to be that if you were a superintendent from another school system, you had to go through this whole certification process. That was changed recently, the last, what, three years? Been about three years. Yeah. So, now we're so now the state has said, Someone who enters as an already certified superintendent can get superintendent certification in Maryland as long as they have a valid certificate and at least 27 months of satisfactory performance as a superintendent during the last seven years. So that still holds them to a bit of a higher standard. Any questions about that? And I will tell you, this PowerPoint is, um, is on your system's computer. So if anybody wants a copy of it, you are more than welcome to it. So once they've done, they've done that, they've met the certification requirements, they've gone through three interviews, two with the board, well, and dinner, I guess, with the board, which probably counts as a third, <laughs> and meeting with stakeholders, meeting with focus groups. Then the board decides who they want to, to select. They confer with the state superintendent of schools. So she has a final okay on, on anything that happens. Um, they negotiate with that top can candidate, and then they meet in public session to appoint a new superintendent. Now, I will tell you, boards do not have to go through this process. By law, a board can go into closed session, and they can say, we want Bill Middleton to be our superintendent, come out and announce it. Your board's decided that they don't want to do that, that they want to have public input, that they want to have a series of interviews, they really want to look very carefully at what the options are for this county. So I think that speaks very highly for the commitment that they have to the process. Then, this is what the timeline looks like. So you can see, where are we? We're in October, so we're like right on, right in, right on time. Um, December to February, we advertise. And we'll start advertising literally as soon as we get the characteristics. And so that you can see that's why that October to December depends on when we have that first meeting with the board. February to March is screening, and then we interview April and May, appoint in June, July, when the superintendent begins. Officially, according to Maryland state law, superintendent must be given a four-year contract and must start their service on July 1. So if you found someone, if they found someone tomorrow that they wanted to appoint, they could not appoint that person as superintendent they would have to wait until July 1 for that appointment. <coughs> so, uh, we've got two groups. So we're going to ask you to answer three questions for us. The first question is really for the advertising, for the brochure. And that is, what are two to three things that make your county a very special place to work and to learn? Why would someone want to move here, in essence? So we'll give you chart paper and ask you to talk in your group 
agree on those two to three, and you'll see that every one of these questions is going to be limited by a small number. And that's because if you're putting out an ad, you can't have 17 things in an ad. So it makes, you, it makes your job a little harder because now you have to kind of hone it down to what are the top two to three things. So we'll give you some chart paper and markers, and we'll be back. Before you get going, are there any questions about the process? Yeah, I know we can do it at the end also. I've got it at the end, yeah. Okay. Chart paper and markers. And somebody probably needs to volunteer. Oh, whoever prints the best, please. Yeah, the best print. print. I don't care as long as it writes. Doesn't matter. Okay, don't do it then. <laughs> so what do you? I put the tells and it should more than half of this. I'll put question number one on staff. Okay, so question number two is the biggie. And it's three to five qualities, characteristics you want to see in this new superintendent. And the reason we ask you for three to five is if you think about putting together an ad, you cannot have 17 things you're looking for. And it also means that like the, like the board, you have to, to kind of hone that down to the most important characteristics or qualities. So, go. So you kind of get the theme. The first question, is a question that asks, I know he wants me to use the mic. First question, we'll use in advertising. So what, what would make someone want to come and live here? The second question, the board's going to use in setting up the characteristics and the criteria. The third question is one that we will share with the candidates to give them a sense of what challenges they may be facing when they come into the county. So it can be anything. I know that one answer usually is budget. Not encouraging you to put that, but that's one answer that doesn't surprise me when I see it. And so your challenge here is what two to three challenges uh, a superintendent will face in the upcoming years. So two to three challenges superintendent will face in the upcoming years. Literally until the end of the process, until that stakeholder piece, until the focus groups happen. And so you will not know when the board is meeting, how many folks they're meeting with. The board will be very, very busy. Um, but you won't have any sense of that, and there won't be any word certainly coming from us or from anyone else. So if you have some questions, really feel very free to ask them. Yeah, if you add, at this point, it's scheduled to go out and the application is to go out. The first of November, first week. I'm sorry, the first of November, uh, and uh, it'll be out because of the Thanksgiving holidays and the Christmas holidays. It'll probably stay out until first of January, and then they'll come in and the, the board will start going through them and uh, selecting interviews and doing interviews and what have you. Well, you, you mentioned that uh, you just finished one in Worcester County, I believe it was. Um, how were the, uh, what was your opinion of the candidates and the response that you got? I uh, just finished one in Worcester and also just finished one in, uh, in Garrett. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> we've been getting uh, 18, 15 to 18 applicants. Uh, in, in Worcester, we had like uh, 15, I believe it was, ended up 12 of them kind of were in the ballpark. Um, they, uh, they interviewed, most, most of the time, boards will interview first round six, five or six, and then uh, possibly move it down to four, and then come up with X number of finalists, four or five. And, um, we recommend that if, if they can find three candidates that they believe can do the job, they need to bring three candidates forward for the public and the employees to, to talk to. Um, just in case one withdraws, <laughs> then you still have a choice. If you only do two and one withdraws, which has happened, then you know your choice is pretty well made for you. You either take that person or you redo the search. Um, but uh, as, as Kitty said, uh, for, for you at this point, and actually for the board, it's, it's a patience building process. It really is. Um, because you, you need time in between each step. 
to be sure that people are buying into the next step and that they're going to show up and do some more reference checks and this type of thing. So it is a patience building process. We Right now the schedule says it calls for this to be done um, in March, end of March. So it gives the person some opportunity to to settle in with, uh, you know, doing some things ahead of time. So we've done that with a couple of other searches, and it worked out well. Um, with the potential election of new board members that are going to be possibly new to the whole process of being a board member, and with three board members who have stated they're still learning a lot of this, is there work that's being done with me to give them professional development and training on how to do their part of this process? NABE offers a new board member orientation for new board members, and it's held in December, so it's almost right after the election. And so if there are new, if we have new board members, they will be invited to attend that training session. It really goes over some board basics. Um, but nothing specific to the process of how to interview a superintendent any of that there's nothing that's done like we don't do anything formally uh, we certainly bill you may want to talk to that and more we, we uh, <laughs> if a board I, I will say if a board asks uh, many times uh, in Worcester we did a retreat with the board prior to the board uh, starting the search process because they wanted to to kind of make sure that they were all on the same page and they had two people on that board was it two or three who had not been through the search process before so it's up to each board to determine what kind of training they would like to have. Because five, they haven't been through. Yes. And, and as we go through this process, we, we meet with the board regularly. We've already, I've already met with them twice. We'll be meeting with them shortly on this. And we try to give them the, the steps and keep them advised as to, you know, how this process works. So we, we try to do some training as we're going along, yes. Questions. Other questions? Okay, you, you know who we are, uh, and uh, people here know how to get in touch with us. If you have questions, do not hesitate. Please uh, do not hesitate. Please very, feel very free to either email or call us. Yes, Jackie has our email, and uh, and so does Geneva. She's got. And it. so yes, so does Geneva. So. You know, I'd much, much rather you ask the question than have somebody tell you the wrong answer. Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you. so much.